Okay, here we go. Another crazy, crazy, crazy saxophone. Probably one of the most astounding saxophones I've ever played. And I've played a million saxophones. I played one of these for quite a few years and then um, switched over to the Yamaha Custom. And I always loved that horn. The first time I took it to a rehearsal, nobody could believe it was me playing. You know, you, you never sounded like that, you know. <clears throat> and it just filled up the room like crazy. So that was a lacquered version. Um, this is the nickel silver version, not black painted, but actually a nickel silver plated. So this is a Calworth SX90R, one of the few saxophones made in the world with rolled tone holes. So if you can imagine the, the pad hitting this little cookie cutter of an edge of a tone hole, as opposed to a nice rounded surface, you have more surface to seal to, and you're not cutting through the pads like on a standard saxophone. Um, nobody wants to do it. It's too expensive. Con did it back in the 30s and 40s and all the C melodies and stuff. And um, I guess it was just too expensive for them to do it. But beautiful black nickel, beautiful engraving through it, and an absolutely <clears throat> pristine condition. It's a one-owner horn. Guy bought it brand new in 1989. And then recently had it overhauled with roo pads, the kangaroo pads, in black with these huge uh, bronze, not brass, but bronze resonators that stick way up, stick right down into the tone hole. So it's just blasting. Um, unique feature, it's got the little G-sharp thing here. So you push the G-sharp, this little teeter-totter goes up, hits on the F-sharp key and pulls the G-sharp pulls the G-sharp up. So basically no sticking G-sharps, which is uh, just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, you can see the bell. It's just absolutely pristine. The other crazy feature <clears throat> is the palm keys. Palm keys are actually adjustable. There's a lock collar right here. Back off the lock collar, spin it up, spin it down, put that palm key anywhere you want. And uh, <clears throat> so you can set it right up into your hands if your hands are big or smaller. Um, no problem, you can adjust it instead of adding all those big risers and all that junk on top of there that look ugly. So um, comes with not one, but two necks. So Peter Ponzal is a famous mouthpiece and neck maker, uh, was working and consulting with Kyle Worth for a while. And I actually have a, a Ponzal model, uh, Kyle Worth, that, that uh, he was uh, consulting with. So it comes with a stock neck and it comes with a Peter Ponzal neck, which is a serial numbered uh, limited edition neck. <clears throat> so anyhow, just amazing. Amazing condition, amazing playing, and amazing sounding. But listen to the B flat on this thing. It's the only complaint. Some guy said, well, it's too loud. And I said, well, no such thing. You know, it's like saying you have a car that goes too fast. I said, well, just don't blow it as hard. You can get a nice... <laughs> So, <clears throat> I think it's actually a bigger bore than like a Selmer style bore because you can just you can just crank on this thing. So, um, a bigger bell, it won't even fit in some cases um, uh, with the, because the bell is, is so big it won't fit like in the SKB cases. But uh, man, oh man. And again, the whole thing just starts shaking. I played one of these the other day and I played it back and the whole iPad was shaking in my lap when I hit that low B flap. <laughs> So that's the stock now. So, uh, ah, the cork's a little stiff from my mouthpiece. So we're going to take that off and uh, we're going to 
put the Ponzol neck on, which absolutely fits just perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect fit. I hope this doesn't need cork release. Let's get it on there all the way. Yeah. Okay, now of course the reed's all messed up. Let's get the reed back. Come on, come on. We're burning, burning our minutes here. Okay. So the pawn's on that. A little brighter, brighter and louder. You know, I like the stock neck personally better. If you're playing lead and you got to blow over a whole band, um, this neck really cuts quite a bit more. Again, it's like getting two horns. Uh, the extra necks run about 500 bucks. So they're not cheap. And um, it's one of the few horns I've come to kind of a crossroads, whether or not just to keep it for myself. I'm just that enamored with it. And I've only played it for about 10 minutes. So there we go. I'm going to play a little quick little ditty here. So the reed's still back on. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, so.
anyhow, it's just crazy. Um, my reed's flopping all over the place, changing necks. But, I mean, the lacquer's perfect, the nickel's perfect, the engraving's perfect. Bell, not even a nick, this thing barely, I don't think it ever left the house. Um, and one more uh, close-ups on it. Well, there's Stanley right there. Um, you can hit my webpage at www.stevegraysaxes.com. That's S-T-V-E-G-R-A-Y, saxes, plural, dot com. And uh, you can see some close-up pictures. Comes in a, a beautiful, super lightweight. I mean, there's just no weight, but it's still nice hard. This is a winter brand case. And just also uh, oxblood color uh, in great condition. Again, two necks and for less than half of retail. And you basically get a brand new saxophone with two necks. So, pretty darn cool. Um, I just got to get one more. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Talking about rocking the house. So, anyhow, not for the faint of heart or the faint of breath. So, thanks. Uh, Riva Ducci.